Okay, so good morning, everyone. Am I audible? All right. So in the previous session, we have already discussed about the simple circuit with DC excitation in which we went through the star and delta connection, okay, and different transformations were there. So today we will be discussing about some of the theorems also. So before that, let us just quickly revise what we have seen so far. So we discussed that two different figures were there in the last session. One was regarding the delta connection. Second one was regarding the star connection. Main utilization was for just simplifying the network so that whenever we are analyzing, we can just properly simplify it and we can calculate it regarding that. So first of all, if that is like a triangle shape, you can convert it into this simplification. So for that three different equations were there. We saw the methodology also, how those equations were derived. Okay, so we just have to consider it as a series and parallel connection between two terminals. Then we just added it. Okay, then adding and subtraction, we got this final equations. Right, so we saw these three equations for the delta to star transformation. After that, what we saw, how to convert this star into the delta. So for that, same those three equations were taken into consideration, then those were multiplied. After the multiplication, we got the simple addition. And we obtained three more equations for that, that you have gone through in the last session like this. Okay. So that was regarding star to delta transformation. Also, we saw one numerical that suppose this kind of circuit is given, then how to just simplify it and calculate the current or resistance or whatever can be asked in the examination of GQ. So that is how we saw that. Any doubt up till now? Everything is clear from your side? Anyone is having any doubt? See, up till now, we have covered RLC element, KCL has been covered, KVL has been covered. Then we saw this star and delta transformations also, then voltage and current sources also. Also, the types as well as sources both, okay, that we have seen. Fine. So, any doubt in any topic regarding this, then you may ask. Okay, fine. So, moving ahead now, today we will be discussing about the new topic and that is regarding superposition theorem as well as the Thevenin's theorem. See, these theorems are quite easier to understand, only just you have to remember that how to replace the circuit. So superposition, Thevenin and Norton's theorem are very much easier to understand. So comparatively to other units, unit one will be easier in the part of fundamentals as well as numericals. Unit two is regarding the AC circuit in that also some of the things will be covering of DC fundamentals along with the AC. And most of the numericals has been asked from, you can say from the unit one and unit two only. Later on, whatever the units are there, three, four and five, numericals are there, but theoretical portion is more in that. So just make sure that you cover this, both the chapters very well because they are having the highest weightage in the GTU examination. Okay, so now starting with the superposition theorem. So what this theorem is all about. So first of all, the statement is like that. It states that in any linear network, containing two or more sources. See, whenever they are talking about the linear network, they are talking about the resistance, inductance, and capacitance only, right? So they are talking about the linear network, which is containing two or more sources here. So they are in the response in any element is equal to the algebraic sum of response caused by individual sources. What they are trying to say, we will try to understand this with a figure. Suppose I'm having this kind of network, okay? So I'm having two voltage sources here. V1 and V2. So first of all, suppose I'm applying KCL or KVL anything on this and I will be getting one of the equation. Normally in the superposition theorem, they are dealing with the KCL. Okay, the KCL rule has been already implemented in superposition theorem. So what the theorem is trying to say, suppose I'm having this loop and I'm applying KCL, so I will be getting one equation for total current. Now what I have to do, I have to take into consideration only single source. And I have to just eliminate the other source for the calculation approximation. So now suppose let us don't consider that we are having V2. Let us just consider V1 only. So we will be getting one of the equation for the current regarding the KCL. Okay. In the second scenario, now what we have to do? Now we have to consider the V2 only. Okay. In the second scenario. And this V2 will be considered V1 will be ignored. Then we have to implement the KCL. So I will be getting one more equation. So theorem is saying that when I'm considering both, I'm getting this equation of total current. 
and if i'm considering the power sources or current sources alone then i'm getting two different equations and if i add them then i will be getting as equal to the total which i was getting okay so that is how the theorem is working means everything in the total is same as the calculation of total of the individual okay that is what they are trying to say we will see this fundamentally also which are the steps how to eliminate the power sources as well as how to calculate it let us just go through the theory first okay so this theorem is very useful to find the response at a particular point okay because they are working with the algebraic sum of responses caused by individual response in the sense that can be voltage or current when we are just dealing with the individual source alone and other sources are kept at zero just like we saw that only v1 is considered at that time v2 is kept at zero when v2 is considered v1 is kept at zero suppose we are having v3 also so whatever the total current is like first of all will be taken for the v1 then only for the v2 at that time v1 v3 both will be zero at the time of v3 v1 and v2 will be zero at the time of v1 v2 and v3 will be zero and we will calculate it we will add it and that will be equal to the total current that can be directly taken for the v1 v2 and v3 okay so that is how the statement is there this theorem can be applicable only to the linear network because here they have given when reason that why it's not for the non linear power can't be determined here they have written that power can't be determined with this theorem since the relationship between power and current voltage is non linear okay so here they have taken about just the linear and non linear relationship because when we are dealing with the power dissipation at that time you have seen the equation v into i right so if the linear network is there then only we can calculate it otherwise for the non linear element we can actually calculate the v into i right so because it can be anything except the rlc okay so that's why they are writing that that is one kind of limitation for that okay so that is the superposition theorem now let us see which are the steps that need to be followed in this superposition theorem so first of all they have write that find the current through the resistance when only one independent source is acting and all the other independent sources for the respective internal resistance will be short circuited current source will be open circuited means what they are trying to say suppose i want to take into consideration only v1 then this will be short circuited this will be like directly connected because we have to ignore this v2 has to be zero right and if suppose instead of v2 we were having some of the current source then that would have been open circuited okay that is what they are trying to say so that is how the circuit will be replaced we will see that in the numerical also that how this thing is working because we have to take into consideration only single source then second step they are saying that find the current through the resistance for each of the independent sources okay and third step is there find the resultant current through the resistance by this theorem in which we need to add everything together that is how the fundamental is working now let us see by the example that how it actually works okay so let us start with this first of all consider the network as shown in the figure and we need to find the current flowing through the resistance r3 you can see here r3 so we need to find that what is the current passing through this r3 okay so first of all they have taken into consideration a node and node voltage is denoted by the v because we need to apply the kcl here so that you need to take one reference node right so that is taken like this v okay voltage is v and the node is whatever you can name it like one or two anything the node voltage is v so first of all applying the kijov's current law to v1 and v2 both acting both acting in the sense we are taking into consideration both of them up till now we have not taken single source that we will be taking in the next okay so first step is let us calculate the total current by the kcl so you can see here for this current direction you can see what will be the final kcl first of all for the resistance you can see here two currents will be there okay we can say it like i1 i2 i3 also but okay up till now they have taken it as i so what they are trying to say for the first resistance you can see the potential differences between two voltages v1 is already there and this node voltage is v so what they have written is v minus v1 upon r1 okay so you can assume the current is going in this direction okay so they have taken it as v minus v1 upon r1 okay this current will be taken like this normally whenever the current direction is not given they take it as outwards currents okay so this outward currents are actually taken as in the addition because we know what was the kcl inward plus outward would be zero right so we are only having outward currents so those are just added together so this is v minus v1 upon r1 that is the first current okay 
Second is when I'm talking about the resistance R3, you can see only one node voltage is there, right? So we know according to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR and I is equal to V by R. That's why they are writing it like this. So for the R3, what I will be obtaining directly V upon R3, okay? And for this current that is passing through R2, you can see the node voltage V is there plus V2 is also there, right? But because it's going outward, so from whichever direction it's going outward, we have to take into consideration potential difference from that. So they have written it like V minus V2 upon R2 because we have to deal with both the potential difference that are connected with the R2 resistance, right? So that is how they have written it as zero. Now for this R3, you can see what is the node voltage for V here for the R3 resistance. Can I write it like V is equal to IR3? Yes, because that is definitely the voltage across the R3 resistance. Now they are replacing this IR3 value where in this equation. Okay, so they have written it like this IR3 minus V1 upon R1 plus V upon R3. So they have directly replaced it with the I because that is how the value of I can be obtained from here. Then here also V is equal to IR3 has been kept minus V2 upon R2 is equal to zero. Simply they have replaced the value of voltage V is equal to IR3. Now you can see here if I'm taking I into common here, so I will be getting this R3 upon R1, okay, plus R3 upon R2 from this equation, all right, plus one. And that will be equal to V1 upon R1 plus V2 upon R2 because on simplifying this, we will be getting this minus V1 R1 minus V2 R2. Right, I can write this equation like this also. Plus I is there, plus what is it there? IR3 upon R2 minus V2 upon R2 is equal to zero, right? So they have just kept together the positive terms here and the negative terms are there. That is going into the RHS here, okay? So on the simplification of this, I will be getting the value of current like this. That is V1 R2 plus V2 R1 upon R1, R2, R2, R3 and R3, R1. That will be like how the LCMs will be taken and how we will be simplifying that, okay? So let us just name it as equation number one. That is how when we are implementing the KCL to whole network, okay? You can assume the current direction getting outwards. That's why they are getting added. Then we have taken into consideration Ohm's law and that is how the KCL has been there, okay? Now, according to theorem, what we have to do we have to take into consideration single power sources, okay? Single voltage sources. So you can see here, this is short circuited, okay? Initially in the figure V2 was there. According to the theorem, what was the statement? You can see here, you can voltage sources replaced with the short circuit, okay? So they are now short circuited means direct connection will be there if you remember the fundamentals, right? So this is now short circuited, no in between load or resistance is there and that is how it is connected. So we are not having V2 at all now, we are considering it as zero. So you can see V1 is there, R1 is as it is, R3 is there, R2 is there. Now suppose if I'm implementing the KCL now, so how, how I will be getting the equation of the KCL. So you can see here, when I'm implementing the KCL here, first of all, they have talked about IT1 that is passing through the R1 here and that is the total current here. So if I want to calculate the total current IT1, so what will be like the total current here? Total current will be the total voltages, okay, upon the resistance, right? Here, total voltage is V1, all right? So they have written it as V1 here, you can see. When they are talking about the total resistance, okay, so what will be the total resistance? So you can see the R1 is actually in the connection, R1 is in the series connection like this, with which of the resistances you can see R2 and R3. Can I simplify it like this? Okay, because R2 and R3 are in the parallel connection now, right? So that is how they are writing the total current IT1. That is regarding V1 upon R1 plus, now it will be R2, R3 upon R2 plus R3. They are just combining the series and parallel together, okay? Normally, if I'm writing the equation for this, so what will be the equation for this equivalent current? That will be R2, R3 upon R2 plus R3. Okay, normally we had the equation like one upon here, that is like one upon R2 plus one upon R3, right? But if I simplify it, I will be getting this, that is in the series connection with R1. So the total resistance is R1 plus this, okay? And the total voltage is this one. So they are having this V1 into R2 plus R3 upon R1, R2 plus R2, R3 plus R3, R1. That will be the equation for the total current IT1 in this circuit, right? Now, suppose I want to consider the current pa passing through the R3 resistance. So here comes into the picture, 
the current division rule if you remember what was the current divider rule in that we were taking into the consideration the total current into the opposite resistance of the parallel circuit upon the resistance that are in the parallel circuits okay so here in the parallel circuit we are having two different resistance only r2 and r3 because this one is in the series connection right so that's why whenever i want to consider the current that is passing through a parallel circuit with respect to the current divider rule here i will be taking into consideration the total current passing through the whole circuit in the multiplication of the opposite resistance in the parallel so that is how the r2 is there because we are considering r3 so which is the resistance opposite to r3 in the parallel that needs to be considered r1 will not be considered why because that is in the series whenever current division rule is there only parallel currents are taken into consideration and opposite resistance in the parallel connection is taken into consideration so that is it1 into r2 upon r2 plus r3 so that equation gives me this simplification you can see here that is like v1 up into r2 why because we are having the value of it1 like this right so they are just keeping it here and on the simplification you will be getting this because see in the denominator also you are having r2 plus r3 here also r2 plus r3 so that is getting eliminated here i am replacing the value of it1 here so i am left with v1 only and the r2 only right and in the denominator rest of the things same as it is so that is the equation for the current when i am just taking into consideration v1 alone okay so that is how it's going through here so that is the first equation we can see okay 1.1 let us just name it like this so that is how first of all we have calculated total current for the v1 only and second i have to take into consideration what the current division rule okay so just make sure that you are clear with the current divider rule that we have already covered in the previous session okay now the second thing here let us just take into consideration v2 acting alone means now i am having the v2 power source only and here you can see the v1 is short circuited okay it's not there so v1 is zero so that is now how they have taken it to the short circuit so we are having the r1 r3 r2 as it is and here let us just suppose the total current is i t2 and the current passing through the resistance r3 is i double dash okay that is how they have taken into consideration so what will be the total current now we have to deal with the v by r so v2 is there now regarding the resistance what will be there r2 is in the series with r1 and r3 can i just say it like if i'm drawing the circuit from here first of all r2 is coming then what i'm having it i'm having one r3 and r1 like this okay so that is how i'm having the parallel connection so once again they have combined it for the total resistance okay so on the simplification you will be getting this now the second thing here whenever the parallel connection is there you can see current gets divided okay whenever the parallel connection will be there so what is the current divider rule once again total current that is it2 into the resistance that is connected in the parallel because we need to calculate for the r3 what is the opposite resistance connected into the parallel r1 is there and in the denominator the resistances that are total in the parallel connection so that is r1 plus r3 okay so that also gives me this equation why because the value of it2 will be replaced here this r1 r3 will be eliminated so we will be left with v2 and r1 here you can see here and rest of the thing as it is okay so that is how i can obtain the value when the v2 is acting alone for the kirchhoff's current law now suppose you add both of them let us just name it as 1.2 if you add 1.1 and 1.2 you can see here that is i dash and i double dash i will be getting the value like this so can i write it like this v1 r2 plus v2 r1 upon r1 r2 plus r2 r3 plus r3 r1 i am just adding 1.1 and 1.2 okay now you can see when i am adding this this equation is exactly as the equation 1 which was the equation 1 let us see once again when v1 and v2 both were acting together i was getting this equation 1 v1 r2 plus v2 r1 upon all the resistance right similar equation i calculated with the individual power source and short circuit in other source and i got this so can i say the theorem is proved lhs is equal to rhs all the individual sources algebraic sum is equal to the total source current and total voltages that we are taking into consideration right so that is how the superposition theorem is working so that is the proof of that in the examination the question can be like prove the superposition theorem for the given network right so at that time you have to go through everything that has been there as per the equation you can take the example of any network it's not necessary that you are taking this network only if you are familiar with the kcl well 
just you have to make sure that the parallel sources are there as well as series sources are also there right then only you would be able to prove that quite easier all right so any doubt up till here what we have done so far see you need to be quite familiar with the ohms law then you need to be quite familiar with the current divider rule okay that we have seen in the previous session if these two things are clear along with the kcl then only you will be understanding this right so that's how you have to be consistent consistent in each lecture otherwise the sequence will be missed and you will not grasp the content right so i guess these three things are clear any doubt in this anyone every one of you are getting the concept that what's going through these are the fundamentals that you have gone through in basic electronics in the last semester also okay so i guess any doubts are there from your side then you may ask are you getting the concept is it getting clear that what's going on here all right now moving ahead let us see one numerical okay so what is the numerical let us see that and before that first of all let us see the limitations also for the superposition theorem so they are saying that it's not applicable to the circuit consisting of non linear element means if in the circuit we are having semiconductors or gas tubes at that times it won't be working it will be working with simple linear like rl and c elements okay it's not only applicable to the circuits consisting of dependent sources okay so if you remember we have seen the voltage and current dependent sources voltage controlled voltage source voltage controlled current source right so it will not be applicable because here the values will be fluctuating so that is the second limitation of this theorem third one is it is not useful for the circuit consisting of less than two independent sources means if we are having only one source then how you will just add it up together that will be the total current and that will be the individual thing right so that's why if total and individual both are only single source then it's not useful at least that has to be two independent sources then only we can sum it individually and last one they have written it's not useful for the power calculation since the power is proportional to the square of current or voltage okay if you remember that p is equal to v into i and if v is taken as i r then it will be i square r right and if we are taking i is equal to v by r then it will be like v square by r right that were that were the two equations for those were the two equations for the power so because of that for the power calculation it's not quite advisable right so that is how the superposition theorem is working now let us see one of the numerical i guess all of you are having calculators with you keep it handy numericals are quite easier in this unit all right so let us start with this this is the implementation of superposition theorem find the current flowing through 9 ohm resistance we are having it as 9 ohm here so what they have given you can see here they have given us the current and voltage it's not like we are having two voltage sources here we are having one voltage and one current so what was the theorem stating when we are having current we have to open circuit them right so when they will be open circuited then only we can calculate it for the individual sources right so let us begin with that here we will be having two options first thing is that we have to convert the circuit into only power source acting alone means v1 is acting alone 3 volt is there the 6 ohm is there current passing through the 9 ohm is taken as i dash 9 that is the current passing through 9 ohm and here the current is in the open circuit you can see that was the rule of the theorem in the second circuit now they have taken into consideration current only so you can see 6 ohm is there 9 ohm is there current source is there but when i am replacing the voltage source i have to short circuit it right so that the potential difference is zero so that is how the voltage will be short circuited okay so what is the final phenomena this total thing should be equal to this 1.1 plus 1.2 okay that is how if i am adding up i must be getting this now i want to calculate the current passing through this i9 okay so that can be written like i9 dash plus i9 double dash what is i9 dash that is current passing through here when only 3 voltage is considered what is i9 double dash when that will be passing through here when voltage is short circuited and if i am adding it i will be getting the final current that is the whole procedure you need to follow for this superposition current okay so now for the superposition theorem let us find what will be the value of i9 dash so can we just say that we have to implement the kcl rule here so we are having only one voltage is here right so for this one voltage what i can do can i write it like i is equal to v by r that is for the ohms law here right so when i am taking into consideration the v by r and if you analyze this loop can i say this 6 ohm and 9 ohm is in the series connection right 
so what i have to do i can write it like 3 upon what will be the resistance total now 6 plus 9 because that is in the series connection you can analyze that right so that is like 3 by 15 so what will be value of the current that is passing through here can anyone tell me what is the value of this i9 dash 3 by 15 can anyone tell me yes it is 1 by 5 3 by 15 okay so just calculate the value of that yes very nice so that is 0.2 right everyone is getting this values okay very nice okay we are getting it point 2 here simple to understand what we have done only one loop was there we are not having any more resistance here right if it would have been there then series and parallel both would be there but because we are not having any other resistance here we are having only two resistance in the series connection so that's why my i9 dash is equal to point 2 i have to remember this so my 1.1 is i9 dash is equal to point 2 now let us take into consideration second scenario now we are taking into consideration this source acting alone where voltage is short circuited okay so now you can see we are having 9 ohm also and 6 ohm also and if i am dealing with this they are in the parallel connection so whenever the current is going through the parallel connection current division rule comes into the picture so what is the current division rule if i want to take into consideration for the i9 double dash so what you can find it through that here you can find it through v upon r that is the ohms law but we need to deal with the current so total current will be there that was like it equation was there then we have to take into consideration the opposite resistance okay and both things were getting added according to the current division rule if you remember this r2 is the current that is in the opposite of the parallel connection and all the resistors that are added in the parallel connection and this is the total current that was the equation for the current division rule okay so because i am having this parallel connection total current is 2 ampere here into what i have to do that is 6 upon 6 plus 9 that is my current division rule is there so what is the answer of this i9 double dash can anyone tell me what will be the answer of this 2 into 6 upon 15 that is like 12 by 15 i am having right so what is the answer of that yes i am getting the answers in the chat box it's 0.8 ampere right here you just have to mention the unit also 0.2 ampere all right and here it is 0.8 ampere all right so now what was the rule for this you if you remember let us just name it as 1.2 according to the superposition theorem the total current would be the addition of this two right so i just have to add 0.2 plus 0.8 so what you will be getting 1 ampere right so that is the total current passing through this 9 ohm all right so that is how you will be implementing the superposition theorem just you need to remember whenever the parallel resistance sources are there current will be divided whenever the series sources are there at that time current division rule is not there it's directly ohms law but if we are having this kind of circuit where actually current is passing through this portion it is in the parallel connection that's why the current division rule comes into the picture the equation is like that it is there that is the total current passing through the circuit into the second resistance in which the parallel connection is there I means suppose i want to calculate for 9 ohm then the second resistance in the parallel is 6 suppose i had to calculate it for 6 ohm then second resistance would be 9 ohm right so that is how the value gets replaced here and in the denominator you will be having all the resistance connected into the parallel this is for the two resistance source only when i am implementing current division rule for more than two resistance at that time the value gets changed instead of the r2 or r1 here it will be the total resistance in the parallel right so that equation becomes different it into r equivalent will be there and all the resistors that are just getting added okay summation of all the rn will be there that is how the current division rule works for more than two resistances at that time i have to calculate the equivalent resistance because i am not having only one resistance in the parallel everything will be getting added right so this is for the two resistances only so just make sure that you go well with the fundamentals of this current divider rule also so that is how the numerical is going on okay so now we are reconnecting once again okay we are left with 10 minutes but let us just initiate one more meeting so that it doesn't get interrupted because we will be going with the thevenin's theorem now so let us just end this meet and let us join once again any doubt is there then you may surely ask all right okay so let us reconnect it let us get reconnected again i am ending this meeting yeah
Okay, so as we were talking about the theorems, so that is how this theorem is working. Let us just quickly see that. Okay, that we have seen so far. We were talking about this numerical in which we got the final answer. The current flowing through the nine ohm resistor is one ohm, uh, one ampere, right? So that is how we are getting the total current passing through this. That is one ampere. Okay, that is getting passed through this. All right, so that's how we are getting the values now. All right. So now let us start with the next thing. So that is regarding the Cavanine's theorem. Let us see that. Okay. So now we are having one more theorem. Up till now we have seen about the superposition. Any doubt in the superposition theorem? We just have to take into consideration when to open circuit it and when to short circuit it. Okay. That is how you just have to remember that. And the concept regarding current division rule, Ohm's law, that is must, that is important. All right. So now starting with the Thevenin's theorem, this is the second theorem. After that, one more theorem is there, which is named as Norton's. So Thevenin and Norton are quite similar. Only in the one thing, series connection will be there. And in the second thing, a parallel connection will be there. Okay, that we will see how the equivalent circuits work here. So this is for the Thevenin's theorem. It states that any network having a number of energy sources and resistance can actually be replaced by one equivalent network which is having single equivalent voltage source in series with a single equivalent resistance. I mean, suppose in the network, number of resistances are there and number of voltage sources are there. So we can simplify it like this. One voltage source is there named as VTH in the series with RTH, that is the total resistance in the network. Okay, so that is how we can actually make one equivalent network. So you can see how we can simplify it, okay? In the second theorem, Norton, that we will be discussing later on, only difference will be that here it will be parallel connection instead of series, okay? So that is how Thevenin and Norton can be understood easily. So we are having one network, number of resistors and voltages are there. We can just convert it into very simple one circuit. Suppose two voltage sources are there, okay? Two voltage sources are there and three resistor sources are there. So we can just directly make it like one equivalent voltage and one equivalent resistance in the series. That is how we can simplify it, okay? So here VTH is Thevenin's equivalent voltage source. RTH will be Thevenin's equivalent resistance when all the sources set to zero. So now let us see which are the steps to be understood here, how we can actually achieve that. The network is saying that we have to make one single one, then how it can be achieved. So you can see the application of this theorem is to determine the current in any element of a given network. Suppose we are having like this, the battery source is E, R1 and R2 is there and one load resistance is there connected, okay? So if we want to calculate the current passing through the RL, that what is the current passing through this load resistor, then what will be the procedure that we need to understand now? So first of all, consider the network shown in the figure that we want to find the current flowing through the RL. I need to find the current that is passing through this resistor. So first of all, what is the procedure? We need to remove the resistance RL in which current is to be determined. So open circuit will be created. So the first step is that in whichever element I want to calculate the current, I just have to ignore it. I just have to make it short circuit. I just have to make it open circuit. Okay, so let us just see that what they are saying. So now here the first step is RL is removed. You can see the previous figure. R1 and R2 is there, that is in the parallel with the RL. So now the RL is open circuited, it is removed. That is the first step of Thevenin. The current that is passing through the element, because I want to find the current passing through the RL, that is removed and this is open circuited. You can see here, so this voltage is there, R1 is there, R2 is there. Suppose the current flowing through is this. Now I have to calculate the VTH that is Thevenin's equivalent voltage, okay? Because that is how I will be converting it. So this VTH is here. So how I can find it for that the equation is given. Now here what they are saying that VTH can be found through like this. VTH is equal to I into R2 because that is the potential difference across the resistor R2. That is the VTH here. So what is the value of current now? That is you can see the current is like R1 and R2 both are in the series connection, right? So I is E upon R1 plus R2 right and that is getting replaced here you can see th is for the thevenin's voltage okay so that is written like this so you can see vth is equal to here i is replaced e upon r1 plus r2 into r2 that is the equation to determine the equivalent voltage according to the thevenin's theorem okay 
second step what is the second step now we need to determine the value of equivalent resistors okay because vth will be connected in series with the rth that is the total resistance of the network right so what they are saying for calculating the value of rth now you just have to short circuit the voltage source you have to ignore all the power sources in that rl is also ignored in the first step in the second step now voltage source is ignored okay so only you have to take into consideration the resistances now you can see if i am calculating the rth from this point of terminal between a and b this both the things will be like in the parallel connection you can see right voltage source is eliminated that is short circuited but the resistances are in the parallel from this point of view okay so because of that can i say this is r1 parallel to r2 so the r equivalent that can be found through the thevenin's theorem will be simple equation regarding the parallel circuit r1 into r2 upon r1 plus r2 right same as like this okay 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 so i can just say it like r1 plus r2 upon r1 r2 so i am just reversing it to find the r equivalent so that is how i am getting this r1 r2 upon r1 plus r2 that is what they have written directly so that will be the thevenin's total resistance between the terminal of a and b which is open circuited okay you have to consider the circuit from the point of view of open circuit only so that is how we are getting the equivalent rth now what is the next step you have to just calculate the circuit simplification vth has been found rth has been found you can directly mention it like this now here we were having the load current also that was load resistor rl so now we have to join it again in the next step okay this thing we ignored right rl which we ignored now you have to write it once again like this so you can see here now the rl is connected connect the load rl which was ignored in the first step and calculate the current through it regarding the ohms law so we are having vth we are having rth and i need to find the current passing through that so for that they have given the equation i is like v upon r okay simplifying it i is equal to v upon r so what is the voltage here that is vth you can see here but what is the resistance from this circuit rth and rl are in the series connection right so that's why it will be written like this this is like rl r into l like this okay so that is how we are having the equation for the current passing through the rl so here in the numerical any other resistance value can be there and you just have to calculate the current passing through that so it will be done like this okay so the what was the first step in the given circuit let us just quickly reverse it how the thevenin's theorem is working so they are saying let us let me just erase all of this okay so what was the first step you need to ignore the resistance in which you need to calculate the current okay so this will be ignored because i wanted to find the current flowing through this element so this is ignored this became the open circuit okay after that what was the next step i need to calculate the vth the voltage needs to be calculated so for that the equation came like i into r so the current was like all the current passing through the series connection of the resistance is there right so that was like e upon r1 plus r2 okay and that was getting multiplied with the resistance here all right so that is how they have written it you can see here r2 was only there so that is how they are writing it for the vth because the potential difference will be calculated in the this resistance only okay that is the vth passing through this so that is how we determine the value of vth after that we have to determine the value of resistor in which voltage needs to be short circuited so we found the equation for the rth after that what was the third step directly make the equivalent network vth and rth you can see three resistors were there so that are converted into the one only and power sources are converted into single only and here the rl in which i needed to find the current that has been joined back again and we got this equation okay so it's all about the ohms law here kcl here as well as how the loop is analyzed okay so you need to be very much clear for this fundamental now let us see one numerical of this and before that let us just go through the limitation of this theorem so same way just like the superposition it is also not applicable to non linear if we are having semiconductor gas tubes then definitely we can't just implement it it's for the rlc components only here they are not actually applicable to the magnetic coupling also because if we are having the magnetic coupling at that time also relationship would be like current will be generating the flux flux will be generating the current so we can say that will be one kind of dependent source only so that's why it's not applicable to this kind of circuit only and they are not applicable to all the dependent sources you can see because they are control controlling the other entities and values can be altered right so that's why that is the limitation of thevenin's theorem 
now when one numerical is there you can see numericals are quite easier in this unit so let us just keep your calculator together with you okay so we are starting with the numerical so i have already calculated it so we are going through the steps also and we can discuss the answers also all right so what was the first step in this suppose i need to find the current in 5 ohm resistor then this needs to be ignored right so what will be my circuit 50 voltage will be there this will be there now this will be open circuited okay can i just write it like this okay and here the vth will be there which i need to calculate so what is the value of vth in the first step you can see that is how my circuit will be there because i want to calculate the current in this one right so for the thevenin's theorem first step is calculating the vth so you can say what was the equation of vth if you remember e upon second thing i was having r1 plus r2 into r2 that was the equation from the theorem right so what is the voltage source here that is 50 what is r1 plus r2 you can see 13 ohm because 10 plus 3 is there right and what is the value of r2 you can see that is the 3 ohm here right this one is the r1 and this one is the r2 so now you need to calculate what is the thevenin's equivalent voltage now can anyone tell me that what is the final answer you are getting here and even 15 50 upon 13 into 3 we are having that okay yes very good 188 174 got your answer yes so you are getting vth yes 230 number got your answer we are getting it as 11.5384 will be to be more precise so that will be like 11.54 right so vth is 11.54 now you can see in your textbook also this numerical is there but the answer is getting different okay if you are having the atul prakash in textbook and if you go through the thevenin's theorem example on page number 67 the answer of the vth is written as 10.44 here okay the answer of the vth is quite wrong so that is like 11.54 so just make sure that you update it right so the value of vth is not 10.44 you will be getting it 11.54 all right so just make sure you update that on page number 67 that is the printing mistake here all right so we have already obtained the value of vth now what is the next step we need to obtain the value of rth okay that was how the theorem was working for that voltage needs to be short circuited right so this was the step 1 now for the step 2 we need to consider the value of the resistors only where this voltage is short circuited here okay so we are having two resistance in the parallel 10 ohm and 3 ohm because if the current is passing through that this two will be in the parallel thing so what will be the equivalent resistor here that we need to calculate so directly for the parallel connection i can write it like this 10 into 3 upon 10 plus 3 simple r1 r2 upon r1 plus r2 that is for the parallel connection here right because we are having the parallel connection so what is the value of this 30 upon 30 can anyone tell me what is the equivalent resistance here yes calculate it and you will be getting the values yes very good i'm getting the answers 188 174 207 very good okay so you are getting somewhat 2.307 right here you are getting it 2.307 so that is how you are getting this rth in here vth unit v don't forget to mention the voltage and unit right so it is 11.54 volt and here it is rth is 2.307 ohm so that is your second step now what was the third step yes 184 got your answer so what is the third step now make the equivalent network as shown in the figure because that will be like vth will be in the series with the equivalent resistance okay that was the equation for the thevenin's theorem so now what we have to do you can mention the vth here that is 11.54 volt that is in the series with rth that is 2.30 volt okay now i have to connect that load back load resistance rl is equal to 5 ohm because here i had to find the current passing through this resistor only right so for that what will be the next equation now we just have to directly go through the ohms law right so what was the ohms law now if i want to find the current il that is like voltage upon resistor so what is the voltage here you can see that is the vth and what is the resistor here you can see these are now in series okay so that is rth plus rl so can i just write it like this 11.54 upon 2.307 you can just take it as 2.30 also 
and plus 5 we have just taken into consideration two digit approximation right so what is the value of il can anyone tell me what is the final value of il yes very nice got your answer 174 188 okay anyone else have you calculated it so far okay so all of you are obtaining the values like 1.58 right 11.54 upon this 7.30 will be giving me the 1.58 ampere fine so that is the value of the load current here the current that is getting passed through the 5 ohm resistor so in the numerical just make sure that you draw the circuit on each step first of all like ignoring the elements and everything and you have to calculate it okay so let us just quickly see the numerical in the revision that what we have done so far i have all of you have obtained any doubt is there then please do ask okay so let us just quickly see what we have done so we just started with this circuit in which we needed to calculate the current passing through the 5 ohm resistance so first of all i have to ignore the entity in which i have to find the current so this was ignored and this was made the open circuit okay and there i had to find the vth okay so vth was like found through in this equation you can see here so when i had to calculate the vth that was from this equation e upon let us just go through this yes so that was from the equation e upon r1 plus r2 into r2 okay so you can see here that is how it was implemented in this step we calculated it vth after that what was the next step we need to calculate the rth that is the thevenin's equivalent resistance in that we have to ignore the power source also and that is short circuited so in the next the second circuit was like this you have to draw all of them in the numerical also then only you will be given full marks okay if circuits are not there only calculation is there then your marks will be cut so just make sure that in this kind of numerical you have to draw the circuits also as well as the mathematical steps so in the next step this is short circuited you calculated the resistance now you have to take into consideration this terminal right so because of them these are in the parallel so that's why we found the r heaven in here all right so that was 2.307 then we have to draw the circuit okay in the textbook also you need to update on the page number 67 the answers are wrong all right so just update it and here you have to connect that resistor back again in which you need to calculate the current so we are connecting it back and we are calculating the value of il simple ohms law now when i am dealing with this kind of network you can see now they are in the series okay because in between a and b terminal we are not calculating we are calculating for the whole circuit so for that vth upon rth plus rl and that gave me the current 1.58 ampere okay so just make sure that you update that value in the textbook it's mentioned as 1.43 on the page number 68 in the atul prakashan but that is wrong you can go through the 1.58 right so that is how you will be getting the values so that is how we have covered the superposition also as well as the thevenin's also any doubt so far are you all getting the concept okay just keep on the habit of reading also because that is quite important any time your examination can be planned in this covid situation right so just make sure that you keep on the habit of reading simultaneously any doubts anyone are you all getting the concepts all right so just go through the different numericals in the textbook as well okay and also you can go through the contents here and in the next session we will be covering the norton's theorem okay so if any doubts are there you may ask otherwise all of you can leave the session right okay there is one issue regarding the lockdown on the textbook purchasing right okay so we will go through that that notes will be given and everything yes okay so we will just go through that because i guess many of the students are facing this right you guys are not able to purchase the books in this lockdown all right so we will consider this issue and we are trying our best so that we can go through this till then the notes will be given definitely before the exams also but till then just keep on the habit of revising these lectures and sessions also all right okay so we will definitely consider this issue also okay uh, regarding this we have already clarified anything else regarding the curriculum or something all right we will consider this issue of the textbook okay all right then thank you so much all of you and see you all in the next session all right